you know, the music industry is just a microcosm of the world. So whenever you stand for something and you stand for goodness and truth, you will always get resistance. That's period. In order to technically be sane, it requires that your belief system go along with everybody else's. And so um, that's why they put such a high modicum on labeling you as that, mm -hmm. just in preparation for what you might later say. In business, nothing is coincidental or you will be hearing who's losing money. In all of these situations, it's only the artist that's losing. Somebody makes big money. Lauren Hill's name is back in the spotlight lately, especially with all these revelations from Cat Williams about the shady side of Hollywood and the music industry. And it's got fans thinking that maybe there's more to Lauren's disappearance than we realize. I mean, it's been over 25 years since the miseducation of Lauren Hill came out. So at this point, it's highly unlikely we'll get another solo album from Miss Lauren. Now we all know Lauren is an extremely private person, so don't hold your breath to catching her on Club Shay Shay anytime soon. But Lauren did actually hint in the past that she felt forced to leave the music industry for good because she wanted to use her talent for good, while those who pulled the strings behind the scenes wanted her to make a different kind of music and compromise her values. Lauren even said that at one point she feared for her own safety and the safety of her children. And a lot of the things she said echoed Cat Williams' comments about the industry. So what exactly did Lauren experience that made her want to run away and never look back? Was is it really as dark and sinister as some suggest? Let's get into it. At the ripe old age of 25, that the only thing that I could do is, is serve others. You understand what I'm saying? And, and because there are people who have not reached that point in their walk, you know, yes, there's a little anger, there's a little resentment because you, you raise a standard, you know, you, you especially when you do it and, and you make some noise. Lauren Hill's rise to fame was nothing short of spectacular, especially after she dropped her game-changing album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, back in 1998. I mean, that album was the definition of a masterpiece and it cemented Lauren's status as a living legend in the music industry. And the album of the year is the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Producer Lauren Hill. Engineers Commissioner Gordon. Matt Howe. Dawn Jefferson. Ken Johnston. Tony Prenda. Warren Riker. Chris Tice. You know what? This is so amazing. I, I thank you, God. Uh, thank you, Father, so much. This is crazy because this is hip hop music, and you know what I mean. It's like. You know. But here's the thing. After winning the Grammy for Best Album, Lauren's solo career took a bit of a mysterious turn. And to this day, she still hasn't released a follow-up to Miss Education. To be fair, Lauren didn't completely vanish from the music scene. In fact, in July 2001, she gave fans a taste of new material during a taping of an MTV Unplugged special. That performance was later released as a live album called MTV Unplugged Number 2.0. And she didn't stop there. Lauren kept touring in the early 2000s, keeping her music alive and her fans engaged. But as time went on, something changed. There was a noticeable decline in her public appearances, leaving everyone wondering what was going on behind the scenes. Back in 2003, Rolling Stone magazine sparked a wave of curiosity with an article titled The Mystery of Lauren Hill. And according to their investigation, during the lucrative years of 1998 and 1999, Lauren's earnings soared to an astonishing $40 million, capturing the attention of Hollywood's elite. Offers for roles in major blockbuster productions came flooding in, with Lauren reportedly being courted for parts in iconic films like Charlie's Angels, The Bourne Identity, The Mexican, and even The Matrix Trilogy. Most artists would jump at the chance to star in such blockbuster hits, but for reasons unknown, Lauren turned down all these opportunities and hit the brakes on her music career. So in the early 2000s, whispers started swirling around about Lauren possibly hitting a rough patch. And you know how rumors go, they spread like wildfire, especially when they involve someone as iconic as Lauren. Now what added fuel to the fire was Lauren's association with this controversial spiritual advisor named Brother Anthony. Word on the street was that things got pretty intense, with Lauren reportedly diving deep into Brother Anthony's teachings. In fact, according to Lauren's bandmate Praz, she even handed him a tape of Brother Anthony's lectures, and he described it as some real cult shit. But here's where things get even more 
more interesting. Apparently, based on Brother Anthony's guidance, Lauren made some major changes. She cleaned house by firing her entire management team, started immersing herself in Bible study sessions five days a week, and pretty much pulled the plug on interviews, TV appearances, and even listening to music. Then in 2003, Lauren drew backlash when she performed at a Christmas concert at the Vatican and went off on Vatican officials in the audience, calling them out for the scandals plaguing the Catholic Church. And you can probably guess what scandals I'm referring to. Anyway, Lauren didn't mince her words, labeling the Vatican leaders as corrupt and demanding that they repent for their sins. Now, whether Brother Anthony played a role in all this or not is up for debate. Some insiders swear by it, claiming that his influence pushed Lauren to take such bold actions. But regardless, it's clear that Lauren was going through a major transformation. Also, by this point, Lauren had already become a mom to four children, and some insiders suggested that her bold outburst against the Catholic Church might have been driven by some pretty heavy stuff from her past. Now, Lauren herself never really spoke out about this side of things, but word on the street is that she went through some tough times early on in her life. So back in high school, Lauren and Praz were doing their thing, performing together as part of a group called Translator Crew. But things took a turn when Praz's cousin, Wycliffe Jean, came into the picture. He replaced another female vocalist in the group, and let's just say things got complicated. Despite the six-year gap between them, Wycliffe wasted no time making moves on Lauren. And before you knew it, they were an item. And while they kept their relationship under wraps from the public eye, behind the scenes, there was a whole lot of drama. Wycliffe, in his autobiography, Purpose, dropped some bombshells about his relationship with Lauren, claiming that the Fugees split up because of his involvement with her. He also alleged that Lauren played him when it came to the paternity of her first child, Zion. He said she tried to make him believe he was the dad, when in reality, it was Rowan, Bob Marley's son. And that's not all. Wyclef also spilled the tea about Lauren allegedly putting her hands on him, and he referred to her as crazy. But it seemed like Wyclef conveniently left out his own role in the drama. See, Lauren shared her side of the story in a 2004 interview with Trace Magazine and hinted that Wyclef was controlling and didn't treat her right. The Fugees was a conspiracy to control, to manipulate, and to encourage dependence, Lauren said, adding that she tolerated things many people would not have taken in these circumstances. And when asked about her romance with Wyclef, Lauren said, as a young woman, I saw the best in everyone, but I did not see the lust and insecurity securities of men. I discovered what a lie was and how lies manifested themselves. So what's the real deal with Lauren's disappearance from the spotlight? Was it because of the spiritual advisor, some mental health battles, the rocky relationship with Wycliffe, or maybe just the downright toxic nature of the music industry? Well, everyone seems to have their own take on it. According to one source who spilled the beans to Essence magazine, Lauren basically shot herself in the foot when it came to her career because she didn't respect the people working behind the scenes for her. She wants the people in her employ to fear her because she confuses it with respect, the insider said. But Lauren's friend, rapper Talib Kweli, shared a whole other angle and told Essence that Lauren was the one constantly being disrespected by others. And as soon as she stood up for herself, they slapped that crazy label on her. When an artist gives a piece of her soul to the public, she doesn't necessarily get that back, Talib said. And when you're constantly giving huge chunks of yourself as Lauren was, sometimes you have to do things that seem eccentric or crazy to maintain your own sanity. Now, as far as Lauren's take on all this, in a rare interview for Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums podcast, she dropped some truth bombs, suggesting that her decision to disappear from the limelight was all about protecting herself and her loved ones from the shady, negative energy floating around in the music industry. She said, I had to pull back and make sure I and my family were safe and good. I'm still doing that. She also went on to say that a celebrity is often treated like a sacrifice, the fatted calf, boxed in and harshly judged for very normal and natural responses to abnormal circumstances. I wrote an album about systemic before this was something this generation openly talked about. I was called crazy. Lauren's comments about being labeled as crazy got fans drawing connections to what other industry figures like Cat Williams have pointed out about celebrities getting labeled as crazy the minute they dare to challenge the real craziness in the music business and in society as a whole. One fan said that whole unplugged when she appeared differently on MTV and didn't perform any of her well-known hits was her denouncing the music industry. Every song she exposed the industry. She's not crazy and people still 
still don't understand her choices. People have to wake up. And another person wrote, unless you've been there, you do not know how evil the industry can be. You are strong armed into doing things you do not want to do. And you are threatened. And not just yourself, but your family and especially your children. When you really want out, the movies, the money, and the fame is in your rear view. It means nothing to you anymore. You come to find out that it ain't worth it, period. But what's your take on Lauren Hill's disappearance from the industry? What do you think happened that made her take such a drastic decision? Share your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to tune in for the next video.